In part four of the calibration procedure, we are going to establish a base plane for the sandbox, which is important because all the elevations in the sandbox, the contour lines, the colors, but also the elevations at which rain happens and so forth, uh, are relative to the base plane. So we want to make sure that our base plane is level so that otherwise the contour lines will be tilted and it's going to look really bad. The second thing that we have to do <coughs> is to measure the positions of the corners of the sandbox in order to establish a bounding rectangle for the water simulation. Otherwise, the water simulation will not work. Now, you could measure the base plane directly off the sand surface, but because it's really hard to level that, what you're going to do is to put a lid on the sandbox itself, just a piece of cardboard in this case, uh, and then we are going to measure not the position of the sand surface, but of the cardboard, and we are then going to uh, adjust the base plane to get it down into the sand surface that we need it. So I'm going to explain that in more detail, but for right now, let's just put a, put a lid on there, uh, and then we are going to measure the plane equation of this lid relative to the camera, which is exactly the data that we need. To measure the plane equation for the base plane and to measure the corners of the sandbox, we are going to be using the raw Connect Viewer program, which is part of the Connect software package. So I'm just going to run that here, uh, which will show us a window with the live view uh, from the Kinect camera side by side. So on the left here, we have the depth image, and on the right, we have the color image. The sandbox completely ignores the color frame, so we're going to be focusing entirely on the depth frame, which is right now this uniform greenish, bluish color because it is color coded by distance from the camera. So if I put my hand in there, we get red and so forth. Uh, so just uh, uh, ignore that. I'm going to zoom in on the depth, uh, depth view uh, because that's where we're going to be working. And then the first step is to extract the plane equation for that card box, cardboard sheet, which you're not quite seeing lying here. To do that, I need to assign uh, a depth plane extraction tool. The way to do that is to press a button that is not assigned to any tools yet. So I'm going to be using the one key here. Uh, I'm going to press and hold one. This brings up the tool selection menu. And then from the menu, I use the mouse without pressing any buttons and go down to extract planes, point at that and then just let go of one, and now the tool is assigned. Now, before we can extract uh, plane equations, we need to create an average depth frame. As you can see here, there's a bunch of noise, especially in the outlying areas here. And in order to get rid of that, we want to collect a bunch of depth images and average between them. So to do that, I bring up the main menu by pressing the right mouse button uh, and select, excuse me, average frames, which will then take about two seconds of worth of depth frames and create an average. And now you see that the depth frame is not updating anymore. We're now getting a static view. And if I put my hand in there, it doesn't matter because we now have a fixed frame. And that is what we need in order to run, uh, in order to run the plane extractor. So now to do it, uh, I want to draw a rectangle over the region of the image where we have a uniform planar uh, structure, meaning here my, my cardboard. So I want to just extract out a large chunk of the cardboard. I press and hold one in the top left corner, and then just drag the mouse without pressing any buttons, again, just keeping the one key pressed until I get to the bottom here. And you don't have to be too precise about that. Let go of one, and this extracted a depth plane. Now, there's no feedback in the program, but if I go back uh, and now show the, the terminal window where the program is running, then you see it printed out the equation of the plane I just extracted in two different formats. Uh, it, the first line is the plane equation in depth image space, which is not what we want. And the second line is the plane equation in camera image space, which is exactly what we want. Uh, we are going to get back to that later. So I'm going to maximize the window again, and then we are going to go to the next step. After the, uh, after the plane equation, we now want to measure the inside corners of the box to limit the water simulation. For that, at first, I deselect average frames so that we get a live view again. And this is now where I remove the cardboard from the sandbox again, because now we need to measure the sand surface itself. And you can already see this updated. Uh, we now see that this uh, more greenish area around, that's the rim of the sandbox, which is captured by our Kinect camera. It's not ideal, but it's just the way how we set it up. And then down here is the actual sand surface. So what you want to do is we want to measure the positions of the four corners in the order lower left, lower right, upper left, and upper right. And to do that, I need a different tool. So I'm first going to delete 
the plane extractor tool that we just created by going to the tool kill zone, pressing one, now the tool is gone. And then I assign a 3D measurement tool to that same key. I press and hold one again, it brings up the tool selection menu. Uh, I highlight measure 3D positions and let go of the key. And so now I can, uh, in the same way as before, capture an average background frame, sorry, capture an average depth frame by going to the main menu, saying average frames and waiting until it's done. Takes about two seconds. Here we go. And then I just move the mouse to the lower left corner of the box, right about here. And you need to be careful to not accidentally click on one of those parts that are the rim in our case. We want the, we want the inside. So I'm gonna zoom in quite a lot here and then go to that particular corner and then just press the button. And now what happened is, again, there's no feedback in the visual part of the program, but on the command line, it now printed out the position of that point I selected in X, Y, and Z. And you can see how, if you look at these last numbers, the negative number here, and that's the vertical position of the plane we selected uh, relative to the camera. It's in centimeters, so we have minus 90.9 centimeters, meaning it's 90.9 centimeters below the camera. And the point I just selected is 99 centimeters below the camera because it's nine centimeters deeper than the cardboard, uh, the cardboard plate because it's inside the sandbox. So we are going back to the, um, back to the program and now go to the lower right corner. I'm just going to pan to the image here, move the mouse to the lower right corner, press and release the same button again, and then go to the top left corner, select there, here we go. And then the last one is the top right corner. Now, before you do this, uh, you want to flatten out the sand and the sandbox a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly level, but you don't want to have big mountains in there just to make things easier. So this is now the last number. Okay, I go back to the terminal to check if I have four corner positions. We have the plane equations. We have four corner points, looks about right. We go from minus 50 centimeters to plus 50 in X. We go from minus 36 to about 37 in Y. So the connect is not perfectly centered over the sandbox, but it doesn't matter at all. And then in depth, we have minus 99, minus 102. So our sand surface wasn't level, but like I said, that doesn't matter one iota. Um, it's perfectly fine. So that was it. We can now exit from the program just by pressing escape. And the next thing is we want to put those numbers we just measured into the box layout file. So I'm going to open a text editor with box layout.txt. And in this case, it's a new file. It doesn't exist yet. Um, and then the first thing we want to put in is the plane equation for the base plane in camera space. Uh, and we don't want to copy the whole thing. We just want to copy the last four numbers. And the format is going to be slightly different. I'm going to copy these four numbers, paste them in here. And you can see how the, the plane equation is printed as x times and then a vector of three elements equals something. And instead of the equals something, we just want to have a comma in there so that we have uh, three numbers which define the direction that is normal, that is orthogonal to the plane in camera space. In this case, the direction is almost perfectly upright, so our connect is almost perfectly aligned with the plane, but it doesn't have to be. And then again, the last thing here is the offset, the position of the plane relative to the connect. So that's the first line of the file. And then we need to copy the four corner positions uh, in the exact same order that they were captured, lower left, lower right, top left, top right. And we don't have to reform those at all. We can just leave them as they were, uh, and that is it. So now before I close this, uh, there's one thing that is, uh, uh, that's important, and that is this plane here uh, defines the zero elevation surface of the sandbox. Uh, and because the color map for the sandbox assumes that zero elevation is more or less sea level, you definitely don't want your zero elevation to be 10 centimeters above the sand, which in our case, because I put the, the cardboard uh, sheet on top of the sandbox, so we want to lower the zero elevation level. And fortunately, that's very easy. We just have to change this number back here. Um, so as I said, the cardboard surface was 90.9 uh, .9 centimeters below the camera, but the sand is between 99 and 100 and so forth. So I can just edit this minus 90, and I can just push the zero surface, let's say 15 centimeters down, by replacing 90 with 105. Uh, and that's really it. Then I save the file, and we are done with the step. 
um, what you want to do is when you're running the sandbox, you want to kind of find out if you like where your zero level is, and then as if you don't like it, uh, you can adjust it uh, in this particular file uh, however you see fit. So that's step uh, four uh, of the calibration procedure. The final step in the calibration procedure is to align the 3D topography captured by the Kinect with the projector so that the contour lines line up and that the, the height maps line up. Um, and for that we have a separate calibration program called Calibrate Projector. I'm just going to run that right now. Uh, and then we're going to run through the steps. Uh, and I just made a mistake, but we can correct that immediately. The, what we want to do is we need, again, we need to create a tool uh, to measure tie points between the projector and the Kinect. And in this case, normally I would map the tool to two keys on the keyboard, but here we have this very convenient button that is built into the sandbox, um, so I'm going to use that. Now one thing, before we press any of those buttons, uh, let's click the left mouse button once inside the, inside the window of this program uh, to work around a bug in, uh, in the VUI 3.1-02 version. So now, in order to make the tool, I press and hold the drain button, or just any keyboard key if you want to, uh, this brings up a tool selection menu, and from that menu I, I create a capture tool, let go of the button, and now the program asks me to press yet another button, which I can then use to recapture uh, the, the background image that is used for calibration. So I'm going to use two on the keyboard for that. Okay, now let me put away the keyboard mouse and the cardboard sheet. We won't need that anymore, and obviously we need to get access to the sand surface. So, oh, I still kind of need the keyboard. The idea is now that we use a calibration target. Where I put that thing? Uh, that, um, that is just a, a flat circle. In this case, we used an old CD, uh, glued a sheet of paper to it, and then put two lines on it that intersect exactly in the middle of the CD, just, you know, judging by the, by the hole in the back. Um, and then in this case, I, I taped a little wire to the back of it so I can hold the CD in my hand without touching it. And that's going to be important. I'm going to show that in a moment. And then uh, the idea is that we hold the CD into the, the sandbox area so that the, the white crosshairs projected by the projector line up with the lines drawn onto the CD so that the, the Kinect can capture the CD's disk and can then use as a 3D location in order to create a tie between the 3D space as captured by the Kinect and the projection space of the projector. Uh, right now, don't be surprised that the, um, that the green blob here that is showing the position of the disk is almost lined up with the CD. Don't expect that to happen. That's purely coincidence due to the way we lined up the Kinect and projector. Uh, it might be that the green disk shows up over there or over there. It makes, makes no difference at all. Just don't, don't expect this to happen. It's pure coincidence. So what we want to do is we want to capture a set of these tie points, um, and the program is going to go through them automatically, where we take one that is above the sand, and then one that's very down low, and maybe one even below the sand, so we dig a hole, uh, in order to give the software enough data to create a proper calibration between the two systems. So I'm just going to start, and I'm going to hold the disk. Uh, and yeah, the reason why I have this, uh, uh, this wire here, if I hold my hand too close to the disk, then the disk will not turn green, it will not be detected because now it's just being detected as an extension of my hand. I need to be far enough away. So I'm lining up the, the CD so that it's low down and that the crosshairs line up precisely. I hold my hand as still as I can and then I press the, the button here, whatever button you assign to the capture tool, and then the system takes two seconds of measurement and goes over to the next tie point. Uh, when, after you press that button, during the time the system takes the measurement, try not to move the disk at all, try not to get other body parts into the image, otherwise it would confuse the software. Uh, try to hold as still as possible. So now I'm going to get a tie point that's above the sand surface, lining it up, making sure that the disk shows up as green, not as yellow, that's very important. Line it up, disk stays green, and that the green blob stays nice and round. We don't uh, want it to be cut off like this. If I get too close to the ground, it gets cut off. So we want it like this. Press the button, wait two seconds, go to the next. The other thing to look out for is try to hold the, um, the disk as level with respect to the Kinect camera as possible. The software potentially still works if you hold it at an angle, but it's not as good. Uh, so you want it to be orthogonal to the view direction of the Kinect as far as you can, as much as you can get it. 
it just will lead to a better it will lead to a better calibration. And regarding the, the height or the heights at which to take these tie points, you want to bracket, you want to be above and below the area where you expect the sand surface to be uh, during use. Uh, so here now we get a low tie point right above the sand surface, press the button, and then we get another high one. And now I want to get one that is actually below the sand surface. I want to go all the way to the bottom of the sandbox. So I need to make a hole here. So I'm going to just dig in. And this here is kinetic sand. Uh, so it is a lot harder to dig a hole than with, uh, with regular sand. So I'm just going to do this. So now the problem is, if I hold the disk into this hole, uh, it's not going to show up because I captured a background image. So everything below that background image will be ignored by the software. So I need to update and you see how this pile I made here is now showing up as foreground. I don't want that either. So this is where I can now use the second button that was assigned to this capture tool and I press that and the sandbox will turn red for a moment. This is now the Kinect is capturing a new background image. So now you see how the yellow stuff here disappeared and now if I hold the disk into the hole I need to bend the wire a little bit. Uh, you see how it, uh, how it gets picked up and how it's nice and green and I'm almost at the very bottom of the box. I need to make sure that it stays green and stays the disc. Press the button, wait, and then go out. So now I could leave this here. Yeah, I'm just going to leave the pile there where it is. Uh, so then I get another high tie point. Oops, not green, here we go. Want to, you want to rest your arm or your elbow on the side of the box just to have less noise in the measurement. And then we get another low one. and another high one. Well, this is where I can't really easily do this. So here we have to really freehand it. As it turns out, the system now works well enough that the little jitteriness from my hand doesn't really make a difference. And then another low one. And another high one. And here I can rest my hand on the, on the, on the rim. Need to make sure to get... Okay, here it doesn't show up in yellow very really nicely. Why is that? Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's do it like this. There you go. And all right, so now we have the first round of tie points complete. Um, and at this point, the software already calculated the uh, calibration matrix between the projector and the connect. And it visualized it in real time by drawing these red crosshairs uh, that indicate where the system thinks the calibration target is. And if the calibration worked out well, then the red crosshairs should always intersect exactly in the middle of the target no matter where and how I move it. This is a way to judge in real time the quality of your calibration. Um, it will just show you exactly how far off you are and here we are spot on. Spot on. Off by about a millimeter. Yeah. So this calibration is good. Uh, if it's not so good, then you can just keep capturing more tie points. You notice how the crosshairs move back to the lower left-hand corner. So I can just keep holding the target in there and refine the calibration by pressing the button again. And it will, uh, in real time, update. So now you notice how this point is now tracked perfectly because I just use it as a tie point. But now if I go to somewhere else in the sandbox, uh, it might not be that perfect anyway. So you can just continue doing it, but this result we are having here where we are less than a millimeter off across the sandbox is actually a very good result. That's what you're aiming for. So that's the final calibration step. At this point, we are done. And now to test the calibration, I'm just going to exit out of this program by pressing Escape on the keyboard. And then I'm going to run the sandbox proper. Uh, and it will pick up these, the new calibration data set immediately, so I don't have to do anything else. I just need to run the sandbox, for which we have a script called Run Sandbox. And there we are. And so now this is using the calibration we just created. And a very quick and easy way to test the calibration is to make a tiny hole into the sand. With kinetic sand, that is really easy. I just poke my finger in there. And then I don't want the water right now. Uh, and then you notice how, well, it may be not so easy to see in the video, but from my point of view, the contour lines defining this hole go exactly, they line up precisely with the hole. Let me make another hole right here just to check it. And let me get rid of the water. And, uh, and there we go. It worked really nicely. If I make a little line here, 
you can now see how nicely that uh, lines up. So this sandbox is now really, really well calibrated um, uh, and, and ready to be used. Now, the last thing that I want, to, I want to tie back to calibration set number four, where you see here now the, uh, how the colors line up or align with the elevations, where we, have, we go from very dark green to this light green to brown and to white. Uh, if you don't like that mapping, if you want to shift it upwards or downwards, that is where you edit the, the offset value in the plane equation that we put into box layout.txt uh, in the fourth calibration step. That's just where you want to play with that and figure out where you need it to get the best, to get the best visual results in the sandbox. And that's it.